Hello and thanks for joining me. I recently bought a uh, quarter 27 die and it's an oddball size and uh, when I got it look at there, different size. I've got a, a die holders for this but nothing for this. And I want to be able to thread on my lathe so I built a uh, a die guide for my lathe. Now I've got one for the larger dies, but I didn't have one for the small small die. So this is what we're going to make today. This is a guide fits in your tailstock chuck. Well, let's get on with it. That should be the center of inch and a quarter. Okay, I want to drill my relief holes behind this die. These will be the holes to relieve the chips. So that's lined up with the back of the die. And then I want to go. I'm going to drill a half inch hole behind the die, so I want to go half of a half an inch, so that's one quarter inch further. So I need to go 250 thousandths. Okay, just got done drilling the intersecting holes. If you ever do that, go real slow. It, it tends to grab the bit about halfway through. Okay, get a pilot hole started here. Now I want this next drill to be about the same diameter as the outside of those, uh, oh, I don't know what you call them, chip relief holes, whatever. Get it to be about that big in diameter. That's this drill right here, which is 5 eighths. Obviously I'm not very centered, but it'll be close enough. I want to go deep enough where I intersect with these holes right here. Yeah. No problem there. It's always hard to drill when you're intersecting holes. drill bit wants to grab. For this next step I'll be using a boring bar and I want to be able to control the depth. So I'm going to turn my cross slider uh, or rather my compound at a right angle. That way I can use this dial to to know when I'm exactly half or exactly the right depth. Okay, I've got a carriage stop here. And I've got my boring bar set right at the uh, edge of the shaft, right, right at the edge of the hole there. Now I can go in with my dial, 100, 200, and 77. Five, six, seven. That's, that's what this ends up. 
277. I'll go a little bit deeper. So now I can move to my carriage top and get the depth just right for uh, for this die and the diameter. I hope, and we'll see. Okay, I've got my dial set at zero there. It's just a convenient place to stop. Probably can't see it in the video. Now I'm going to measure the hole so I know how far to go with it. Okay, I got 715 on the hole and 790. Anybody know, know what the difference is? Okay, I took the difference and divided it by two. I'm terrible on math. I used a calculator. So, I need to go 34 thousandths larger. Okay, it's time to be real careful. On the on my uh, cross light here, I'm about two thousandths away. That's a total of four thousandths difference. On on these older lights, uh, one thousandths movement is actually one thousandths. Okay, did I go too far? No. I think I'm going to take a couple of cuts without ever moving anything and see what happens. Might have noticed I didn't face the end of that. I'll do that in a minute. Boy, that's a perfect fit. I'm going to take one more pass because i got a feeling I need to <laughs> be able to get my tap and tap, or I mean, excuse me, my die in and out of there. Okay, I've got the die in there. Review what I've done here. I drilled intersecting holes. They're 15 30 second holes, half inch would have worked good. Uh, the 15 30 seconds was just a good sharp bit. Uh, I allowed enough room for this uh, die to fit in there depth wise. This is 20 millimeter. It's kind of hard to get that, that die out of there sometimes. Uh, I've drilled a, a 3 8 hole all the way through it that will uh, make it easy to eject that die. Uh, now I've got to put a set screw in here, two set screws actually, that will go into that recess on the die. 
Looks like they're exactly straight across from each other. So let's do that next. Okay, must have been a little crud underneath that die when I tested it on the lathe. Turns out I'm almost, actually slightly deeper than flush on the die guide. Just very slightly. Uh, what I want to do next is drill a couple of set screw holes here. The die has uh, little recesses for a, a set screw. And I want to make the set screws hit very slightly to one side so it pulls the die into the socket. So 273 thousandths, half of that is 136. So I'm going to make it, uh, I'll make it 150 thousandths from this end. Okay, I got everything lined up and I'm going to drill with the center drill and then drill through with a 732nd drill. It, it'll be tapped for 632. Okay, I've drilled the holes for my set screws. Now I want to drill a couple holes for my handles. Uh, close to the die, or right in line with the die would be ideal, but I'm going to go back just in line with the uh, chip clearance holes and go one quarter turn. And drill a couple holes for my handles. Yeah. I'm going to make these quarter 20, but first I'm going to drill the center hole. Okay, I ran into a little problem. Where these two holes intersect on the inside here, uh, the drill wants to deflect. So I'm going to have to rotate this and drill from the other side. And to do that, I've got to maintain squareness. So I'm going to dry, uh, put a square piece of metal here. Do my best to transfer a line. Okay. I'm tapping the holes for the handle. And I'm using my drill press as a guide to keep them square with the keep the tap square with the holes. Okay, I'm making a couple of handles here. They're three and a half inches long, which I think will be long enough. I'm going to tap that for quarter twenty and uh, screw a set screw in there and use that to hold it to the die guide. Okay, I'm sure many of you have seen these things. It's a spring-loaded guide to put in your tailstock. Uh, I made this one. They have them commercially available. This will keep my hole straight. I'm going to use the lathe power, but only intermittently. Got a spiral point tap here, which is not ideal for a blind hole, but I don't have a plug tap, so that's all I have to do. Okay, I didn't have any 632 set screws, but I kind of like these socket head better. I'll get some shorter ones later, that's all I had. I sharpened the tip of them. Uh, 
see how it works. Ah, looks good. Flush and level. That's ideal. I've got my handles here with a, a set screw in them. I didn't lock tight them yet, but I will. I'll just screw into here. Yes, yeah, trying to screw into the handle. Those will go right there. Wonder if I got them square. Ah, heck no. Look at there, a little bit off. Anyway, that'll work for a demonstration. Okay, that kind of bugs me. This, the handles are out of line. Uh, in hindsight, drill the quarter inch or the number seven hole for the quarter twenty threads first. Just drill it all the way through and then drill the larger holes for the chip clearance after you drill the uh, for the quarter twenty. Uh, the way to use this set that in there let me get a piece of uh, brass or quarter inch rod there to thread. Okay here's how to use this. Hopefully it works good. Put it in low gear oh yeah This is brass. Pretty easy to hold. If I was threading steel, I'm sure it would uh, get a little more torque on it. Good clean threads. Well, that's my version of a die guide for your lathe. I think it worked pretty good. There's some chips in here, not a whole lot. I guess if I did a lot of threading, that would relieve some of the chips. I think also, I'm going to leave it with one handle. I'll tell you why. If something were to happen, I can hold it like that and let this thing get away from me. Uh, with two handles in there, it's, it's harder to hold it away from a pinch point. Uh, I think one handle is much better. Well, there it is. My version of a die guide for a lathe. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think one handle works a lot better. Uh, I'll replace those with shorter screws and get a longer set screw for my handle. And that'll be a useful addition to my shop. Uh, be sure and check out my channel. Uh, I've got a lot of other metalworking videos. And thanks for joining me.